Hi, my name is Gloria Coronado. I'm an epidemiologist at Kaiser Permanente Center for Health Research. The title of my talk is Improving Follow-Up of Positive Stool-Based Tests with Timely Colonoscopies in Community Health Centers. So today I wanna to tell you about a program to help patients who need a colonoscopy get one. This is important because millions of people each year get an easy at-home fecal test to find early signs of colorectal cancer. Yet many of those patients forego the important next step, which is a follow-up colonoscopy. These patients have about a one in, ten, in 11 chance of having colorectal cancer. My research shows that, that we can use the existing data in the electronic health record to identify patients who are likely to forgo colonoscopy. By providing assistance and support to these patients, we can improve participation in colonoscopy and save lives from the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States. By way of disclaimer, in the past year, I've served as a scientific advisor for Exact Sciences and Garden Health. These relationships do not influence my talk today. So I wanna share with you some background information on colorectal cancer screening, the importance of timely colonoscopy follow-up of positive stool-based tests, then I'll talk about an innovative data-driven solution um, that we've put in place as part of the precise study. Then I'll offer some conclusions and next steps. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States. About 150,000 people get colorectal cancer each year and nearly 50,000 people die from the disease. Because colorectal cancer grows over the course of 10 to 20 years, it can be detected at different stages. And you'll note from this image that in stage three, the cancer cells have breached the wall of the colon and now appear in the surrounding lymph nodes. In stage four, also known as metastatic cancer, the cancer cells have now spread to other organs of the body. Each stage of colorectal cancer is associated with a different probability of surviving five years. For individuals that are diagnosed with early stage colorectal cancer, their chance of surviving five years is 90%, and many of them will, will survive well beyond five years. For individuals who are diagnosed with advanced stage colorectal cancer, on the other hand, uh, where the cancer is spread to other organs of the body, these patients have only a one in 10 chance of surviving five years. The good news is that recommended screening could prevent at least 60% of the deaths from colorectal cancer. But the problem is, is that screening rates are low. Nationally, based on data from the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System from 2018, the rates of colorectal cancer are only 69% nationally. And in certain settings, like in federally qualified health centers, those rates are even lower. The rates from 2018 show a, a rate of colorectal cancer screening of 44%. And both of these rates are well below the national goal set by the National Colorectal Cancer Roundtable of 80%. The good news is that rates of colorectal cancer screening have been increasing in federally qualified health centers. You'll see in this diagram that in 2012, the rate was 30%. And over time, that rate has increased to 44% by the year 2018. There's great anticipation that in the year 2020, the rates have dropped significantly due to care suspensions that were put in place as a result of COVID-19. There are a variety of recommended ways to screen for colorectal cancer. An easy at-home option is the fecal test, also known as the fecal immunochemical test or FIT. And this test looks for hidden blood in the stool um, and it can be done without any dietary or medication restrictions. Another test is a colonoscopy where a doctor inserts a tube in the rectum to view the entire colon and remove any early growths or polyps that he or she finds. And other tests that are recommended include the sigmoidoscopy, the CT colonography, which is an X-ray of the colon, or multi-targeted stool DNA, also known as FIT DNA. The current U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends screening for average risk adults beginning at age 50 and continuing to age 75. 
new draft guidelines that were issued in 2020 dropped the initiation age to age 45 rather than 50. And these recommendations align with recommendations issued by the American Cancer Society in 2018. This change, the drop in the age of initiation of 45, will result in an additional 22 million um, adults who are due for colorectal cancer screening. So the problem is, is that for those adults who begin screening by using stool-based testing, um, colorectal cancer screening is a two-step screening process. It begins with fecal testing and ends with a colonoscopy. And there are millions of adults who complete fecal testing each year, and, ne and yet not all of these adults who have an abnormal test result will go on to get the colonoscopy procedure. And for these patients, the benefit of fecal testing is nullified. And for the health systems who have put in effort to promote colorectal cancer screening using stool-based testing, those efforts are also nullified. And this matters because as many as one in 11 of these patients with an abnormal fit test result will be found to have colorectal cancer. So they represent a high risk um, population. And we know that delays in getting a colonoscopy procedure after an abnormal fit can result in increased likelihood of getting colorectal cancer by 31%. They're also seven times more likely to die from colorectal cancer and two times more likely to uh, being diagnosed with an advanced stage of colorectal cancer. In safety net practices or community health centers, the rates of, col of colonoscopy following the abnormal fit test result are unacceptably low. The published literature shows that those rates range from 37 to 53 percent. The previous literature shows promise for patient navigation. Um, in addressing the barriers that patients face in getting a follow-up colonoscopy. Bev Green in 2014 published a study at a group health cooperative showing an 11 percentage point boost in follow-up colonoscopy rates following a patient navigation program. Reich in 2012 reported a 21% boost in, in follow-up colonoscopy among patients with an abnormal fit test result in a randomized trial. And two additional observational studies showed promise for this approach. But one of the biggest challenges that health systems face is really figuring out who to deliver patient navigation to. And there's a variety of health systems that have tried different approaches. For example, some health systems will deliver patient navigation to those patients who screen abnormal on fit testing. And this approach makes a lot of sense because, as I mentioned earlier, these patients have up to a one in 11 chance of having colorectal cancer. And so making sure that these patients get that follow-up procedure is really important. Other programs might focus on those patients who've never had a colonoscopy procedure. And this approach also makes a lot of sense because those patients who have never been through the process may face additional obstacles and be unaware of the steps that they need to take to complete the procedure. Other programs might focus on patients who have no upcoming colonoscopy appointment, but I think we can all agree that patients who are able to make an appointment still may face other barriers in terms of completing the colonoscopy prep or, or um, making it to the procedure. Other programs might target their patient navigation resources to patients who simply haven't obtained a colonoscopy after a certain number of months, like six months. However, the problem with this approach is that it's difficult to communicate the urgency of obtaining the procedure. And oftentimes after six months, it's more difficult to reach patients as patients in community health centers in particular um, often change their address or phone number quite frequently. Other programs rely on provider referral but I think we can all agree that providers are not always consistent in referring patients to needed services and providers simply may not know which patients may benefit from patient navigation and which ones will not. So what we're proposing today is using the available data in the electronic health record to identify those patients who have a low probability of getting a colonoscopy procedure 
and directing patient navigation resources to those patients. So if you take a group of patients who all have a, a positive fit test result, and if there was some way that you could tell which patients might benefit from patient navigation, like they all wore a red suit, for example, then your job would be easy. You would simply deliver patient navigation services to those patients. But unfortunately, we don't always know. Um, and what we're pr proposing is that standard navigation programs have typically been offered to um, all patients, irrespective of their likelihood or probability of getting the procedure on their own. And so what we're proposing is really the funnel on the right, which is assessing a patient's adherence probability and delivering navigation to the patients who have a low or moderate probability of obtaining the procedure on their own. So our study is called Predicting and Addressing Colonoscopy Non-Adherence in Community Settings, also known as PRECISE. PRECISE is a partnership between Kaiser Permanente Center for Health Research and CMAR Community Health Centers. It's a two-phase patient randomized trial of patient navigation versus usual care. Our plan is to enroll 1,200 patients across 28 CMAR clinics over the course of a five-year R01 study that's funded by the National Cancer Institute. So our partnering health center, CMAR Community Health Center, serves about 300,000 patients in 32 primary care clinics in Western Washington. Their patient population is about 40% Latino, which represents the same percentage that we see in federally, health, federally qualified health centers across the US. CMAR operates a centralized male fit outreach program that delivers fecal tests to patients' homes each year. The program produces about 700 patients who have an abnormal fit test result each year, and the follow-up colonoscopy rate is um, only 43%. So if we look at the follow-up colonoscopy completion rate across time, we see that at 90 days, about 23% of patients with an abnormal fit test result obtain a follow-up colonoscopy. And this is the timing uh, of a benchmark set by the PROSPER Collaborative of the National Cancer Institute. If you extend that interval to 160 or 360 days or a full year, you see that that rate reaches 43%. There are a variety of steps in obtaining the follow-up colonoscopy. Patients start with an abnormal fit test result, they're referred to gastroenterology, they attend a pre-procedure visit, and they obtain the colonoscopy itself. And what we see in CMAR data is that with an initial group of 715 patients who have an abnormal fit test result, about 90% of them are referred to gastroenterology. However, only 52% of them attend that pre-procedure visit, and 43%, as I mentioned previously, complete the colonoscopy procedure. So what we see is a tremendous drop-off between the referral to gastroenterology that occurs in primary care and the particip participation in the pre-procedure visit that happens at the specialty care site. Our risk prediction model uses available data in the electronic health record to identify patients uh, probability of obtaining a, a follow-up colonoscopy after an abnormal fit test result. Um, and what we see in the figure on the right is good uh, discrimination across uh, patient's probability. With, a, with the bar at the top reflecting patients who have a high probability of completing the colonoscopy procedure, the lines that are labeled B representing patients who have a moderate probability and the lines labeled C representing those patients who have the lowest probability of completing the procedure on their own. The patient navigation program that we're using was developed by Dr. Lynn Butterly from New Hampshire. The program is a timed six topic telephonic patient navigation program that was delivered by a registered nurse who spent about two hours per patient um, delivering navigation. And the initial findings from the program were outstanding. It showed that patients who were navigated were 11 times more likely to complete a colonoscopy than non-navigated patients. Navigated patients were 40 times less likely to miss the colonoscopy appointment. 
and they were six times more likely to have adequate bowel prep than non-navigated patients. And here we see the actual numbers from the program that showed that the rate of colonoscopy completion among navigated patients was 97%. The rate of adequate bowel preparation was 99%. And the program nearly eliminated missed appointments or cancellations that occurred within 24 hours of the appointment. And as we can see from this table, all of the, all of the navigated patients got the results communicated directly to them and their providers also received the results. So by conclusion, uh, risk prediction modeling shows promise for selecting patients for patient navigation based on who has the lowest or lower moderate probability of getting the procedure and may benefit most from that extra assistance. Over uh, upcoming changes to the US Preventive Services Task Force guidelines, as well as the care suspensions that occurred as a result of COVID, really underscore the need for precision tools and having the ability to direct resources to the patients who may benefit the, the most. And so another way of understanding this program is that if your job is to give out hats to people who need hats, you might start with some people having hats and other people not having hats. And so one option you could take is to give hats to everybody, in which case some people would have one hat and other people would have two hats. Another approach, and some programs I think do this, where they give hats to those patients who already have a hat because it's easier to serve these patients or there may be limited hours of operation and those that don't have hats may not be able to come in for a hat. But what we want to achieve with Precise is really offer patient navigation services or offer a hat to those patients that don't have one so that everybody has a hat. Um, so I want to acknowledge my wonderful team at the Center for Health Research at Kaiser Permanente, our partners at CMAR Community Health Centers, and of course our funders at the National Cancer Institute, the Center for Health Research leadership team, as well as the Martin Favorite Foundation. And if you haven't checked out our website, please do. We're at mailedfit.org. There's lots of material. Really happy to, to have you use it. Thank you so much.